This first video of this series introduces the geometry in the bedrock of the Comox Valley, British Columbia, and how it is connected by geomancy to the sacred megalithic site of Machu Picchu and to the New World Monument Christopher Columbus Column in Barcelona, Spain. This geomancy begins to reveal the role of Freemasonry in the precise marking of worldwide geographic alignments. Hornby Island has two prominent ridges marked here with yellow lines that rise to the top of Mount Jeffrey, the 1,080-foot peak of the island. Adding this 3D model overlay shows Hornby Island's watershed boundaries, making clear the orientation of the southwest-facing ridge. Note that the two yellow lines are the exact same length of 2,222 meters, and that their endpoints both occur near where geometry in the landscape shifts. Our first connection between physical and human geography reveals itself by drawing a line from the top of Mount Drefri straight down the ridge to Machu Picchu. The far end is anchored at a specific point in Machu Picchu, the Sacred Stone Square. I chose this particular spot because of the prominence of the 10-foot high stone and because it's exactly 6,666 miles from Mount McKinley, the tallest mountain in North America. Adding a hexagon overlay shows how the ridges are not just the same length, but are also in a hexagonal relationship to one another. Moving the line to the center, we see that it is aligned with part of Demon Island's coast and runs on through Courtney, the human geographic center of the valley. It's clear that there is another hexagonal relationship in the landscape, which is mapped by a hexagon with sides of exactly 7,777 meters, following the methodology of assigning repeating digits if the situation warrants. You can already see the correspondence with the geography of the valley, but there are amazing ramifications of selecting this size that cascade throughout the rest of this video series. For example, fitting this hexagon to the landscape as best possible puts its center at exactly 666,666 inches from the center of the Hornby hexagon. You may not have ever noticed that there's geometry expressed in the bedrock of the planet, but it's a lot more common than you may think. Not just on Earth, but also on Pluto, as you can see with this New Horizons flyby imagery. The crater's rims express regular geometry at multiple fractal scales. Starting from the sacred stone point, Create a circle centered on Machu Picchu and extend it to the Comox Valley. This circle shows that the 5.6 kilometer section of coast from the southeast end of the Comox Valley airport is perpendicular to a line from our Machu Picchu sacred stone point. Create a tangent to the Machu Picchu circle and we find that it aligns very closely with a line anchored at the monument to Christopher Columbus in Barcelona, Spain, a most significant global human geography point. This highly symbolic monument to one of our culture's foundational means stands at the spot where he returned to Spain after his iconic first voyage to the New World to report to Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand. As an interesting side note, the last remnants of Islamic control of Spain also fell in 1492 when Granada was surrendered to the Catholic monarchs Isabella and Ferdinand. There's much more to this Barcelona alignment as we'll see. So we have these two hexagons mapping landscape, one aligned with Machu Picchu and one with the Columbus Column. Centering the lines on the Union Bay hexagon shows how Hornby seems bounded to the northeast by the Machu Picchu line. Centering the lines now on the Royston apex shows how Denman's coast also appears bound by the geometry. Consider another hexagon further mapping valley geometry, this time having sides of exactly 188,000 888 inches. We'll anchor our lines on this apex of this hexagon while showing just how close they are to being at a right angle to one another. At this precise point, Machu Picchu and the Columbus Column are the exact same distance away. Drawing a circle on this point emphasizes this equidistance. Following the circle, we see that it also comes within 16 kilometers of the tip of Easter Island, another iconic megalithic power spot. Because Easter Island is connected to Machu Picchu in this way, I want to show a connection that you may not be aware of. Machu Picchu is part of what is known as the Sacred Valley of the Inca. The Inca capital was in Cusco, which lies below the imposing citadel of Sacsayhuaman. 
The remarkable masonry work here is of the finest craftsmanship and is of massive scale. Often the mortarless joints are so tight as to not allow even a piece of paper to fit between. One signature of this masonry work is the curved corner cut into the corner of another block. Very difficult to execute with the tolerances seen on site. Looking at Machu Picchu and the Temple of the Moon in particular, we see the same signature curved corner cut into other stones, albeit at a much more modest scale. When talking about Machu Picchu masonry, I have to include an image of the most impressive stonework of the Royal Mausoleum. Now Machu Picchu is part of the sacred value, so you'd expect to see the signature in the rock here. But there's no reason to expect the same masonry to show up on Easter Island over 4,000 kilometers away. Found throughout the island are ceremonial stone platforms known as Ahu, on some of which stood the iconic Moai statue like here at the restored Ahu Tongariki. At the Vipanu ceremonial center stands one of the larger Ahu on the island that faces towards sunrise on winter solstice. Ahu Vipanu is a unique on the island in that it has the same precisely fitted megalithic masonry so similar to what we've seen in the Cusco Sacred Valley, complete with the signature curved corner fittings. Consider the implications if it was the same stonemasons that created this Ahu on Easter Island that created the wonders at Machu Picchu. We'll travel back around the globe to have another look at the third power spot on this circle. As has been noted, the potent Columbus Column marks the spot where Christopher Columbus returned from his first voyage to the New World. This spot is a nexus for visitors, as the Column oversees a major ferry terminal while standing at the foot of La Rambla, possibly Barcelona's busiest tourist attraction and most important street. This anchor point defines a line from the Comox hexagon apex that threads straight up La Rambla, past Placa de Catalunya, generally considered to be Barcelona's city center, bisecting Passier de Gracia, the city and Spain's most expensive street and probably second most popular road, directly over one of the city's top tourist draw, Illa de la Discordia, a block on the avenue with buildings by three of Barcelona's most important modernisme architects, and directly over two of seven Gaudi-designed buildings that are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The probability of so many prominent points being located on our alignment is extremely low. The odds of La Rambla being aligned is about 1 in 144,000, and the odds of two UNESCO sites being intersected is about 1 in 3,000. That means the odds of both happening on the same line are in the order of 1 in 432 million. A more in-depth look at alignment probabilities is beyond the scope of this video and is a subject of its own. The line also comes within 80 meters of a hexagonal obelisk, in the last four years of researching this ley line grid, I've seen the importance of obelisks to those in power, so when I see one, I pay attention. However, this is the only hexagonal obelisk that I've encountered in the context of what I've been mapping out. Amazingly, it is so close to a line originating along a hexagon in the Comox Valley. The importance of obelisks to the symbolic palette could not be clear when you consider the over-the-top prominence of the Washington Monument. This largest obelisk and tallest granite structure in the world dominates the Washington DC skyline and in some urgent sense dominates the world when coupled with the domed Capitol building seen in the background. When talking about the Washington Monument in the context of ley line geomancy, the Masonic connection cannot be ignored. Besides the uber obelisk having its cornerstone laid in full Masonic ceremony, it was erected in George Washington's name who was not just a Freemason, but the most celebrated Freemason. The Capitol building dome, with its apotheosis of Washington painted on the inside, 
elevates the first president of the United States to divine status and removes any question of his singular importance. Of course, as you might imagine, the Capitol building's cornerstone was also laid in Masonic ceremony, as shown in this depiction by Alan Cox, where you can see George Washington with the cornerstone and the gavel. So leaving the hexagonal obelisk in Barcelona, we go back to the valley for one last look at the geometry. Extending the line from Machu Picchu exactly through the equidistant point defined by our Comox hexagon goes exactly to the Comox Valley Masonic Lodge. Notice the synchronicity of this lodge number 188 having a resonance with a hexagon side length of 188,888 inches. The Columbus Column also resonates in synchronicity, being built for the 1888 Universal Exposition. I may as well mention the oblique connection the other most important New World Monument, the Washington Monument, which was also opened in 1888 when it was the tallest structure in the world. The valley's human geography again is reflected in the hexagonal patterning with the Comox Valley International Airport Terminal appearing on one of the hexagon's bisectors. This terminal also lies along an 88,888-foot line drawn from the center of the Hornby hexagon through the center of the Union Bay hexagon. In addition, the main axis of this Comox hexagon runs directly through the Comox First Nations Reserve at 3330 Comox Road. The repeating threes showing up in the geography gain considerable significance when you understand the value placed on the number 33 by the Masons. There is a lot to this number, but suffice to say that 33 is the highest degree a Scottish Rites Freemason can obtain, while all preceding 32 degrees can be obtained by merit and ritual, the 33rd is reserved only for the Chosen. One last thing about this particular equidistant point, if you split the almost right angle exactly in half and extend the line across North America through the Great Lakes, it comes within 700 meters of skull and bones. This most famous secret society gained notoriety during the 2004 U.S. presidential election campaign when it was revealed that both candidates, George W. Bush and John Kerry, were bonesmen as Skull and Bones cohorts are known. It's also no secret that Bush's father, former President George H.W. Bush, was also a bonesman, as was his grandfather, Prescott Bush. Since Skull and Bones has only 15 cohorts in a particular year, the fact that two bonesmen, a father and a son no less, held what's considered to be the most important office in the world is uncanny. Given how the Masonic New World has been touched upon in this video, I have to mention that more than any other president, Bush Sr. is known for his explicit calls for a New World Order. Perhaps the most significant call occurred 11 years to the day before 9-11 on September 11, 1990. He stood in front of a joint session of Congress to address the Persian Gulf crisis and delivered the following New World message. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order can emerge, a new era, freer from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. The line also passes through the International Peace Garden on the border of Canada and the United States. This impressive garden covers 3.65 square miles, has 150,000 flowers planted every year, 12-story peace towers, and facilities for thousands. It's also in the middle of nowhere. The closest city of any size is Brandon, Manitoba, which has a modest population of 46,000 and is over 90 kilometers away from the garden. This world-class attraction is clearly marked as being Masonic. Not only are there two openly Masonic buildings in the garden, but the one that seats 2,000 people depicts a giant compass and square. The other building stewarded by the Masons is the Order of the Eastern Star Peace Chapel, built right on the border between Canada and the United States. Order of the Eastern Star is a Freemasonic appendant body open to both men who are Master Masons 
and women who have specific relationships with Masons. Incredibly, the International Peace Garden has not one but two 9-11 memorials. The outdoor memorial is composed of a jumble of beams that are actually from Ground Zero, while the indoor memorial is in the Masonic Peace Chapel, centered around a book with all the victims' names lying open in ritual. The bisecting line from the Comox Hexagon comes within 2.6 kilometers of the Masonic Hall. Of course, the fact that these points are on a line exactly splitting the right angle in the Comox Valley means that both the garden and the skull and bones are equidistant to the Columbus Column and to Machu Picchu. In the next part of this series, we're going to take a look at Mount Kailash and how the geometry and the bedrock of the Comox Valley relates to this most significant human and physical geography point. This mountain's been valued by the powers that be throughout history, with it being marked both in Rome and in Barcelona, as we'll see. We're going to take a deeper look at obelisk symbology and how that's been used to mark geomancy by the same people. Consider signing up for the newsletter at hornbyislandmystery.com because there's a lot more to come in this story and you can be kept in touch and because I'll be offering some exclusive content to newsletter subscribers. Also consider coming to Hornby Island and study this in depth the actual bedrock and your relation to it in the non-duality of being. Thank you for watching.